Welcome to Bite at a Time Books, where we read you your favorite classics one bite at a time. My name is Brie Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. If you want to know what's coming next and vote on upcoming books, sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. You'll also find our new t-shirts in the shop, including podcast shirts and quote shirts from your favorite classic novels. Be sure to follow my show on your favorite podcast platform so you get all the new episodes. You can find most of our links in the show notes. But also our website, biteatatimebooks.com, includes all of the links for our show, including to our Patreon to support the show, and YouTube, where we have special behind-the-narration of the episodes. We're part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. If you'd also like to hear what inspired your favorite classic authors to write their novels— and what was going on in the world at the time, check out the Bite at a Time Books Behind the Story podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Please note, while we try to keep the text as close to the original as possible, some words have been changed to honor the marginalized communities who've identified the words as harmful and to stay in alignment with Bite at a Time Books brand values. Today we'll be continuing Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Chapter 12. The Guard Everyone knows the rest. The eruption of a third army. The battle broke into pieces. Eighty-six months of fire thundering simultaneously. Perch the first coming up with Bulow. Zeiton's cavalry led by Blucher in person. The French driven back. Marc Agnet swept from the plateau of Ohain. Durette dislodged from Papelot. Donzelot and Quiat retreating. Lobau caught on the flank, a fresh battle precipitating itself on our dismantled regiments at nightfall. The whole English line resuming the offensive and thrust forward. The gigantic breach made in the French army. The English grape shot and the Prussian grape shot aiding each other. The extermination. Disaster in front. Disaster on the flank, the guard entering the line in the midst of this terrible crumbling of all things. Conscious that they were about to die... They shouted, Vive l'Empereur. History records nothing more touching than that agony bursting forth in acclamations. The sky had been overcast all day long. All of a sudden, at that very moment, it was eight o'clock in the evening. The clouds on the horizon parted and allowed the grand and sinister glow of the setting sun to pass through. Athwart the elms on the Nival Road. They had seen it rise at Austerlitz. Each battalion of the guard was commanded by a general for this final catastrophe. Friant, Michel, Rouget, Harlot, Mallet, Poir de Morven were there. When the tall caps of the grenadiers of the guard, with their large plaques bearing the eagle, appeared, symmetrical, in line, tranquil, in the midst of that combat, the enemy felt a respect for France. They thought they beheld twenty victories entering the field of battle with wings outspread, and those who were the conquerors, believing themselves to be vanquished, retreated. But Wellington shouted, up guards and aim straight. The Red Regiment of English Guards, lying flat behind the hedges, sprang up. A cloud of grapeshot riddled the tricolored flag and whistled round our eagles. All hurled themselves forwards, and the final carnage began. In the darkness, the Imperial Guard felt the army losing ground around it, and in the vast shock of the rout, it heard the desperate flight which had taken the place of the Vive l'Empereur. And with flight behind it, it continued to advance, more crushed, losing more men at every step that it took. There were none who hesitated, no timid men in its ranks. The soldier in that troop was as much of a hero as the general. Not a man was missing in that suicide. Nay, bewildered, great with all the grandeur of accepted death, offered himself to all blows in that tempest. He had his fifth horse killed under him there. Perspiring, his eyes aflame, foaming at the mouth with uniform unbuttoned. One of his epaulets half cut off by a sword stroke from a horse guard. His plaque with the great eagle dented by a bullet. Bleeding, bemired, magnificent, a broken sword in his hand, he said. Come and see how a marshal of France dies on the field of battle. But in vain, he did not die. He was haggard and angry. At Dred Derlin, he hurled this question. Are you not going to get yourself killed? 
In the midst of all that artillery engaged in crushing a handful of men, he shouted. So there is nothing for me. Oh, I should like to have all these English bullets enter my bowels. Unhappy man, thou wert reserved for French bullets. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books today. While well, we read a bite of one of your favorite classics. Again, my name is Brie Carlyle, and I hope you come back tomorrow for the next bite of Les Miserables. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com and check out the shop. You can check out the show notes or our website, biteatatimebooks.com, for the rest of the links for our show. We'd love to hear from you on social media as well.